Hey everybody, welcome back to our Hardcore Paladin. We are picking up right where we left off. We are going to jump on a flight point and we're going to take that over to Velsimar. The first thing we're going to do is, in defense of the King's Lands, we need Skull Thumpers, we need Seers. This shouldn't be too deadly for us anymore. We may have to stick our head a little bit into a cave, more so for the follow-up. But we should be okay. I know the mu music is loud here. We'll we'll get out Iron Forge in a second, and it'll be a little bit quieter. There we go. Today I decided just to play a bunch of hardcore. That was kind of the choice I made today. I did log into Wrath of the Lich King earlier in the morning, thinking that I would play a little bit. And I did a Slash Who and Stranglethorn, and there were five people on. And then I logged in here. So yeah. Uh, that playthrough is going to continue, I think. I don't, I don't have plans to stop the playthrough, but... It's strange, it is hard to really care much about Wrath right now, I think, unless you have a raiding group, or, you know, you have a, a group of people that you play the game with. And if you're if you're not in that situation, it's really hard to feel like that's the place you should be. Because if you're the kind of person who, for whatever reason, maybe you just enjoy solo play, maybe, like me, you just have zero friends, uh, and a complete inability to make friends, maybe you're in any number of other situations that just necessitates that you're going to play alone most of the time. Feels like hardcore is the place to be, or at least classic era. There are really big server clusters, either, you know, you can be on Mancrick, you can be on Pagel, and they're all kind of joined together, so there's always people in the world, it always feels lively. And if you're a solo player, that's probably where you're at. I don't think that if you're a solo player, that Wrath really has a lot to offer you, except just seeing the stories in Northrend. Which is the one thing that we still want to do. You know, I do want to see the stories in Northrend. We have to see the Horde stories. Alright, yeah, we're going to the south. Let's see, do we need to pick up anything else? Mercenaries is an elite quest. And Wanted Chuck Soul is an elite quest. So no, we don't need either of those. Let's head to the south. And we'll get into things here as quickly as we can. I think it's kind of a weird thing about Wrath, and maybe this is just how Classic was always going to go. You just realize that it's already over. <laughs> I don't I don't know how I to explain it any better than that, but that's my feeling a lot of the time when I think about Wrath of the Lich King. When I think about putting in effort to go find a guild and do, all, do the weekly raiding, I do think back to myself, I say, you know what, you already did all this. And probably the Save most I ever raided in World of Warcraft was in Wrath of the Lich King. We we were doing all the content every week. We didn't just fo do the current tier. We cleared everything. We cleared everything on 25 man and 10 man. That was the guild I was in, Frenzy. Um, and yeah, it was a really, really great time. And that was when I was playing my Holy Pally for the most part. I had kind of started healing in 10 man Ulduar on a, on a Resto Druid. And, oh, we took a, we didn't take the turn we needed because I just got talking too much. And yeah, so I did all the content, you know, I cleared it all. I cleared it all so many times, had so many, so many good memories. And so that's what I think about now when I think about trying to get into Endgame. I'm like, I already did it. And it, it's probably because to the, it's probably because of the extent to which I did it. 
it was a really big time in my life and I had lots of time to play WoW. Um, so I did play lots of WoW. I was living with a friend at the time. All we would do, we, we'd work, we both worked at the same place. We tried to get sa the same shifts, so we, we worked and we worked minimally. We worked as minimally as we can get away with and afford to keep living our lives. And we played World of Warcraft, and uh, we had an amazing group of people to play with. And that's a big reason also why I, I, I've been so hesitant to seek out a guild, a pre-existing guild in the game, is because I already had a great guild, and that guild, you know, I'm not in that guild anymore. The guild's not around. And I don't, I don't know if I could ever replace it, I wouldn't want to try to replace it. And so yeah, the more I think about Wrath, the more I just think like, it's, it's done. You know, they're gonna put Trial of the Champion out, they're gonna put Ice Crown out, and you know, it's gonna be the same content that it was. And it's gonna be the same, the same journey, right? That being said, about reading the quest and stuff, I've never read all of the Horde quests, so that content itself, like the leveling stuff, would be new. But when I think about, do I want to just raid every week and grind a bunch of gear out? No, not really. Especially with kind of how ambivalent I am about Cataclysm Classic. So we spend a bunch of time on a character, get him some awesome gear. Okay, so what? Are we going to go on any new adventures with this awesome gear? Because if we're not going to go on any new adventures that feel different, then... I don't know. So this is the area that we want to be in for the Seers, the Skull Thumpers. Obviously, you know, they're kind of farmed out. They're Shaman, they're for the next quest in the chain. Sometimes we can find enemies back here. Doesn't really seem to be the case right now. Let's check the cave. I'll take it. Does anybody else feel this way about Wrath, about the about particularly about engaging in the end game? I might want to try some PvP. Maybe that's what I should do. That would be something that would be like wholly different than whatever my experience was. You know, I never was a big PvPer. I I don't think I've ever purchased a single piece of PV, PvP gear from the vendor with badges or with anything. So that would be a totally different type of experience. Can't use Scorpion Sting, buddy. It doesn't uh, deal any upfront damage, and uh, therefore somebody like me just comes along and casts Judgment. It happens. Yeah, I could, we could PvP, and I thought about that. I, I got back on the Rogue for a minute thinking, yeah, we could maybe PvP on the Rogue would be fun. You know, but the same, it's kind of the same thing, you know, so we PvP for a bit, we have some fun, we get some gear. You know, it's not like we're taking that gear on any new adventures. We're not gonna, we're not gonna get Wrath of the Lich King Classic Plus. We're gonna, if we get anything, we're, we're gonna get Cataclysm. And we're gonna be told that we should be happy with that. <laughs> Even though basically everyone I feel like agrees and I haven't really seen any direct commentary otherwise. Sometimes people will be like, I wouldn't mind Cataclysm Classic. Sure. Yeah, I mean, sure. I wouldn't mind it either. Is it, do I want it? No. I don't. Because again, once you remake the old world, you're not, you're not in Classic anymore. The, uh, the thing that changes that we talked about the other day is if, if Blizzard remakes the old world in retail, and removes, you know, there's no chromie time for, well, there's cataclysm chromie time. They'd have to remove chromie time, right? So they remove chromie time, which is a useless function anyway to me because it doesn't let you, it, there's level scaling in the game anyway. So if you just go to a zone, you know, you should be level scaled to it, firstly. This should just be unanimous, like level scaling across the board no matter where you go. You don't need chromie time. 
because Chromie Time doesn't get it to a point where you can see an expansion story, and that's kind of the promise of Chromie Time that it never really banked on, was that, you know, it was supposed to be a way for a player to pick an expansion and see the story of the expansion, at least that's what we thought. But that's not what happens, because to see the story of an expansion, you have to go through the raids. To see the story of an expansion, you have to play through the story content of each of the individual patches, of which there are usually three or four. And then more raids, and then more raids, and then more raids. And so yeah, they could put a lot of effort in, and they could design an MSQ for every expansion where the only quests you do take you through the story and take you into the raids. Uh, maybe, you know, you have NPC allies, maybe they make scale it so you can solo the content just to see the cutscenes and the uh, role-playing play out. They'd have to do it like that though, otherwise Chromie time is useless. You just make the whole world level scale, and then you have to make it so that, you know, we can't see those cataclysm zones anymore. And yeah, I, I don't know how they would stop us, stop retail from being able to see the Cataclysm zones, and therefore I don't think Cataclysm could ever be considered classic. Like, as long as you can get to those zones in the retail game, it's not classic content. So it's really only the front part of the cave where we can find the Skull Thumpers and the Seers that we need. When we have the Shaman quest, then we can go, go a little bit deeper. And we do have to go in the cave for this one, that's what kind of makes it dangerous. Is that Yeah, these guys are lower level than us, but... Just having to be inside the cave for most of the quest is uh, detrimental to life. I really think that the biggest mistake that Blizzard made was just not milking Burning Crusade more. I feel like they could have milked Burning Crusade for another year, maybe they could have done like some kind of seasonal content with it and got more time out of it, maybe they could have just added some more freaking content to it. Because in Burning Crusade you still have that feeling of, man we got a lot of classic left in us. We got Burning Crusade, we got Wrath of the Lich King, we got a lot of classic left. Once you're near the tail end of Wrath, you just don't feel that way anymore. You're like, okay, Classic is over. Classic is <laughs> classic is ending. Uh, soon. Doom. That's, that's just like a feeling that's easy to have. But in Burning Crusade, you didn't have that feeling. Because you knew that like eventually Wrath of the Lich King was out there. And for me, Burning Crusade was like a really good balance with some system changes and some tweaks to the game. It's like, it was a good balance. Like a short step away from vanilla era but it, it not too far towards retail yet. Whereas Wrath kind of like steps past that, you know, we can see some more modern design in Wrath, like just taking on a handful of enemies at a time and stuff like that. You know, preludes to the future. 
Whereas in Burning Crusade, just Burning Crusade felt more like vanilla. Wrath feels more like retail, I guess. Is how I see it. So they should have milked Burning Crusade more. They could have gotten another year out of it. I would have really appreciated that, man. We got our warrior to uh, to 70 a little while before Wrath started, and I was like super happy. I was like, oh man, we get to try to farm up the bold set. Oh, this is going to be tight. And we got a couple of pieces, but it turned out that at that point when we had got to level, yeah, not a lot of people were doing heroics in Burning Crusade, because in five weeks from now, they were going to have Wrath of the Lich King, so the content wasn't relevant anymore, and they didn't give a shit. And that, in part, in part, killed that warrior for me. I didn't end up really... I didn't go right onto that character because of that. I went, We went with the Paladin for the Wrath launch, and the, the warrior languished, whereas... If there had been a healthy community of people just kind of running heroics and stuff up until the end of BC, if there had been a reason for them to do that, maybe you take those dungeons and then you up the item levels that they're giving so that people can feel like by doing heroics and stuff like that, they're they're prepping for the expansion so that it kind of keeps that endgame content alive right before the next expansion drops. That would have been awesome because I, I tried to do heroics like every day, man. Like I might have done, but we just got that character to level way too late in the expansion. Had we had another year... I think we'd have had a great time on that warrior, and I think by the time Burning Crusade wound down, we'd have been so attached to it that it definitely would have went right into Wrath of the Lich King, but Burning Crusade was too short. It was too short, and it's like, okay, you're only going to get to do Classic once. Why in the hell would you rush it at all? <laughs> you're only going to get to do it once. All we can hope for is that some kind of interesting Classic Plus or Seasonal Classic Era comes out of all of this. That's really the only hope that there is. Especially for a lot of us now that don't really have an interest in playing retail. Because if I don't want to play retail, and I don't want to play Cataclysm, then the only WoW I can play is Classic Era. And so I just, you know, at that point you really need to, you really need to feel like your version of the game is supported in some way in order to want to keep playing it for like the long term. So we'll see, this year will definitely tell us, right, you know, by, by 2024 we will have a firm understanding of how much or how little Blizzard and Activision plan to support Vanilla Era and Classic in general. We'll know by 2024, by January it'll be clear. Because we'll have had hardcore servers for a while, and we'll have seen if that was done right or if it turned into a mess. And we'll have had the new season of Classic WoW, whatever that shapes up to be. We'll have had that at least started by 2024. So by 2024, January, we will know what the future is going to look like. Whether the, our favorite versions of the game are going to be supported into the future or not. Uh, we have 6 out of 10 and 8 out of 10. We're not, we're not doing bad. We are not doing bad. And the great thing is everyone, everything here is lower level, so I haven't really felt under any big duress. It's been a bit of a relief for these quests. Which can typically be pretty challenging. Got some competition here, very competitive today, I like it.
I'm glad this skull thumper took such a long time to figure out what was happening. We had like five seconds there after he spawned in that we probably shouldn't have had. We actually completed that really quickly considering how many people are here trying to get it done. I know that put us in combat. I feel like we just gave that guy just a better chance to live. He had a seer hurling lightning at him and somebody chasing him. So I don't think we're in any danger from that. By the time it starts to chase us, it's going to be ready to leash anyway. What do rogues take mining for? Would a rogue take mining for weaponsmithing, for blacksmithing to make weapons, or would they take it for engineering for some reason? I'm not sure what they would do with engineering. And the next one is given to us by the guy in here, weirdly. Just given to us by a Mountaineer Wallbang. I don't what name them, I, I just have to read their names sometimes when their name is Wallbang. The Mountaineers tell me you are quite brave and capable, Rambles. We need a human like you around here. The Trog problem isn't getting any better. The reserves have been called to the front and we're all alone out here, but now that we have a seasoned paladin here, let's see what you can do. Ten shamans and ten bone snappers. Safe travels! for uh, Mountaineer Wallbang. With this being level 15, I think we just go do this as well. We just do it right now, and uh, I don't think we'll do the one after that, which is going to be for the named guys. Traveling Merchant is definitely always welcome. We have a dagger here that we don't need. Anything else, we can... Uh, well, let's hang on to the sharpening stones for now. Now, let's sell them. We can make more if we need to. Vulture meat can go. The milk stays. Potions can both stay. I think we're okay. See you soon. We need to make some bandages and then sell them. That is what we need to do. We're also 81 first aid, so we do need to train wool bandage. We haven't gotten any wool yet, so it hasn't really been an issue. But soon we will be getting wool, so we should train it next time we're in a city. I realize that I'm very sporadic with giving people buffs. Sometimes I think about it and I buff a bunch of people. Other times when I'm just like grinding and I'm fighting, I, I don't really think about giving people buffs when I'm fighting. It's more of just something I do when I'm traveling. 
If I'm fighting, then I need all the mana that I can get. I really can't afford to be buffing people when there's combat to be had. That makes sense. I hope it does. With that being said, there are countless times when I run past people and I still don't buff them even if I'm not fighting. I will admit that. That's kind of what I'm saying is I'm, I'm pretty bad about it. Somebody told me to uh, to play a class with no buffs, please. <laughs> They're probably just sick of me like forgetting to rebuff myself. Although with this character, I have been pretty good, I think, about getting might up on us when we're when we're fighting. Do I let it fall off when we're traveling? Yeah, all the time probably. But when we're fighting, I think I've been like I've been ninety percent, maybe maybe eighty nine percent on keeping it up on us when we're fighting. So. Although, like, historically, I would say your critique is absolutely accurate. I'm really bad about the really short buffs. Yeah, we don't need these guys, but they are just kind of in the way. We need to get a little bit further back into the cave. Let's get a little bit of our mana back. We're going to go up against shamans and they could heal themselves if we don't interrupt. And we'll want to have mana because we'll probably have to heal ourselves as well in that case. They'll be hurling some kind of spells at us. You, you know, have no doubt of that. If we're lucky, they're melee, but they probably won't be. Let's see. Uh, yeah, they're slapping us with the cane. That's good. Here comes the heal. We can interrupt it once a minute. But that we're not going to be able to out DPS their heal as far as like killing them before the cast goes off on, on a paladin. So the heal is going to have to be something that we deal with and we just have to accept it. Unless we can interrupt it, which we can do only once every minute. What are the odds of me being able to get up here? Apparently very freaking good. That's awesome. We need to go to a mining trainer and learn how to smelt tin and bronze pretty soon. I'm pretty sure 80. 80 was probably the threshold where we can train that, so we're, we're ripe to go do it anytime. Now there is that other cave, if we go outside into the right, there's a smaller cave that has some shaman in it and sometimes bone snappers. We could check there, but we risk having to fight all of these skull thumpers and whatnot on the way out. Right now it's clear, so right now might be a good time to go check outside. I was kind of hoping they'd have a shaman tucked away back here, but apparently no.
When it comes to questing caves, this might be the only time that I just kind of prioritize the quest and I'm probably not going to do a lot of unnecessary grinding because the nature of the cave is dangerous and it's just not a really safe or responsible place to spend too much time if you don't have to. And we are trying to be safe and responsible, so... Yeah, I shouldn't even be down here. There's nothing down here that I need. Except the copper. We do need the copper, that's true. Hey, we beat the cast. That's actually really surprising. Very lucky. We will get to have our interrupt for next time. Assuming we can get any of these guys on respawn here. There, there aren't a lot of them. Obviously, they're being quickly farmed out. It's, it's kind of crazy. It kind of makes me think maybe we don't do this quest. We, we've got two and three out of ten. I mean, we'd probably be better off just fighting everything we can. You know, hyper spawns are a thing, though, yeah, hyper spawns. I probably should have peeled off and engaged this one. I just kind of worried it would heal the one we currently had. See, when you're trying to fight for spawns like this to complete a quest, you put yourself in a position where like your competitiveness with other players could be something that can get you killed. It's another factor that you have to monitor. For sure. Luck has kind of been on our side here. We've, we've been consistently getting respawns, so I, I'm okay to stick around, I think. I, I think we'll be okay to stick around. We might be able to get this one done. And then this will be the last one in the chain that we do. We're not going to go after the three named guys. Sometimes we're at the wrong part of the loop and we miss the spawns. That's the only problem. Sometimes you run right into them. Sometimes, like this, we're just in the wrong place. Just slightly in the wrong place. It's almost like you're better off to kind of stand still if you can get a centralized position on everything. Uh, and see, we didn't keep moving, we missed this. It's hard to decide, you know, do I stand still? Do I just run in circles like a maniac? 
my least favorite types of quests, you know, when I know we're doing well enough that we just need to stay there, but staying there involves running in circles. Least favorite times. And this is definitely a circle time. We're all doing the same thing, just trying to like hope we can see the spawn, right? There we go, we lost that one. Which one are we gonna lose next? Starts to get you into a negative mindset. Being in a negative mindset is also a thing that can get you killed. Yeah. Mm hmm. Do I want to keep doing this? Do I want to keep doing this for what will probably be 15 more minutes? Uh, not really. No, I don't, actually. Doesn't mean we're not going to do it. It just means I'm not going to do it like this. I, I just, I can't, I don't want to be running in circles right now necessarily with nothing to fight. Maybe if we hang out, we wait for a couple people to finish the quest. Maybe, maybe we'll, we'll get some easy spawns. It could happen. It's not likely, but it could happen. We'll just stand right here for now and farm on these guys. Apparently between hyper spawns and patrols there's going to be an endless supply of them. We can fight our way back to the chest back there. We have a shadow gem. Okay, so mostly junk, that's true.
Looks like we just missed this round of spawns. Yeah, it's sad, but we were like three seconds too late getting here to pull anything. Any enemy that we need for this quest. We could go back outside. There's probably like one or two outside. Maybe we do that. I, I hate being in caves this long, just as a rule. It gets dreary and uh, oppressive. Looks like those guys we just saw just cleared the cave out where we could potentially find the guys that we need. This is a this is a long one. This is probably something more that we should have split up a bit the way we split up the pillager quest just because of how uh, how little we can actually tag of the guys that we need here for this one. It's, it makes it incredibly difficult to feel like you're making consistent progress. Looks like we have a new batch of people entering the cave, which is, you know, just exactly what we needed. It's just exactly what we needed, a whole new batch of people in here, trying to vie for the same mobs. We got a male belt with stamina and strength on it. Yeah, that's actually amazing. So yeah, we'll take it, we'll equip it. And we'll love it. I'm kind of assuming if we pull these, they run through the cave system, they pull every single thing they can over to us, and we just get killed. That's what I have to assume. Otherwise, someone would have pulled them already. Right, they, w they wouldn't be there. Now, there's probably a way to get around to them. Up and around. But surprisingly, nobody's done that yet either. We'll do our heal now so that when he does his heal, it's not as devastating. Although we can interrupt his heal, which we are going to. I appreciate the charge. The charge would have also interrupted the heal. That was a nice thing to do, seeing as how we're competing for mobs down here in the dark. I guess I will, uh... 
I guess I will give you might. Even though we could be in combat at any moment. Well, I after that up. Let's see if we can still get him. I saw an evade pop above his head, which is scary. We're just not going to move for a minute here. We now have a stone splinter mace. Main hand, one stam. We are getting a lot of greens down here. A lot of greens. Greens that we could actually use. Like our belt that we now have. And we're done with shamans. That doesn't mean the shamans are done with us, yeah. It just spawned in a room full of shamans. Perfect. This this guy's probably going to get a heal off on us. I'm going to heal myself as well. And then we'll just start over, I guess. Although we're out of mana and he's not. We're also facing the wrong way and he's not. So that's an issue too. He's going right in there to try to pull the other one. Oh, he stopped. Probably the smart thing to do. This chest is back, or is this a different chest? Either way, let's check it out. Probably just junk left in it at this point. Well, we got a healing potion and some light leather out of it, so I, I really can't complain. Leather is something we need for a lot of weapons. We have our interrupt up, so we might as well go for this guy just to clear him out of the way. Watch the interrupt miss now that I said that. Oh, he's he's not going to try to heal anyway. Oh, there's the heal. I don't need that, and I don't know if they need it, so I'm just going to leave it alive. Assuming that they probably need it. What I will do, since I kind of dropped that on them, is I will give a, I will give a heal here. I will definitely take the hyper spawn for the last mob that we need.
All right, let's get this copper vein and then let's get the heck out of this cave, shall we? Oh, there's actually a fishing recipe over here that we need for the little frog things we can catch. And it might actually be a yellow recipe, so we could do some fishing and get some skill ups on I've been kind of slacking on my fishing. I've been actually playing in the evenings. I've been actually able to get on and play. So instead of just being able to get on for a little bit to do fishing, I have been doing that. Which, yeah, that eats into our fishing time, but it's okay. We've, we've still been leveling our cooking a bit. And uh, catching fishing up won't be a problem once I have just a half hour or so to kill. Let's go ahead and utilize the vendor here. We don't need the one-hander. We don't need the old belt. I don't really think we're going to need this, but we'll keep it for now. Uh, let's just get rid of it. I, I really just... I want the bag space. I'm going to keep the leather. Stuff like leather, shadow gems, uh, tiger's eye, we're going to have to start putting into the bank whenever we have the opportunity. Watch your back. Now this one that just became available up here should be the one for the name guy. We're not even going to take this one. It's three name guys. They pull together. You need all of them. So you, you have to tag all of them. You can't even have other people help you with tags because you have to tag them all. The shield would be nice, but we're just not going to bother with it. It's probably just a good way to get ourselves killed. The risk is not worth it. Um, and I just don't want to really have to bother with it. Because that's, you know, it's it's three name guys, so instead of waiting around for one name guy to spawn and trying to tag one name guy, you're trying to tag three of them. So, you go ahead and imagine that for a little while. What we will do is we will not imagine it or do it. We'll just go do other stuff. Let's take a look at what else we have going on. Heading out here and taking on the breadcrumb. Level 15 would probably be good. Uh, if we're looking further out, we could do some hunting. Crocolis hunting could be next. That's low level, level 15. Let's go do that. We don't have anything we need to do in the Thelsimar, so we don't need to run back to town. We could cut across here. I mean, we're going to get pretty close to town anyway. I wonder if we could have snuck through back here. That probably would have been faster. Either way, yeah, I think we're going to head out to the east. We can do Hunter's Boast. We can do Crocolis Hunting. Okay, let's go do that.
we need to go up here for potential tin. And a nice view as well. What a pleasant surprise. Great to meet you. What's on your mind? We are not going to do gathering idols right now. I don't know if we will come back to do it. It's a level 18 quest and the enemies are like level 18 to 21, I believe. So yeah, we're going to leave that one for now and we're going to continue on to the hunting lodge. We'll also remember to renew our food buff here before we set out to fight. Is it birds we fight first? Pretty sure it's the vultures first. travels.
I'll happily take instant respawns here. Last time we did this, and I don't remember what character it was, these guys were hard to find. I'd like to pull these separately, and it looks like we will have the opportunity to do just that. I don't know if they'd have social aggro or not. I feel like they might have social aggro. Just because that would be really annoying if they did. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll give it up. It's fine. We could have been done, but I, I was really happy to see we got the soldier's leggings of the bear. Uh, another pant upgrade. So from two and two, we go to three and three, stamina strength. How cool is that? Look at that, it actually covers our calves. Very nice. Okay. Hey, that's awesome. Now, yeah, we lost our last guy because of that. We could have been done. But that's okay. Now, with respawns and the player population being what they are, could it take us 10 minutes to get the last guy? Yeah, maybe. It could. <laughs> hmm, it could. Here we go. Today. See you soon. Let's go ahead and do the next one as well. I think it's for elder boars. What can I do for you? See you around. Yeah, five elder boars. And those guys are pretty far to the south, I believe. Oh no, by south I do mean north, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Directions are hard. Let's grab a crocless hunting while we're here. Off with you. And then off with us.
It's going to eat into our time, but I have to go for the tin vein here. Oh yeah, cool. We almost got snuck up on by three elites. Oh my god. I have never seen these guys before. I, I don't know what they're doing, but yeah, two orcs and a, and a tauren. Level 19 elites, all of them. Just almost walked right up on us fighting an elder boar. No big deal. Uh, three hits from those guys? Yeah, we'd be stunned and dead. I don't even know if bubbling would get us out of it and... Okay, uh, that was our luck for the day. I, I didn't expect anything like that. And that's how not being completely familiar with everything can get you killed. Now I know for the future. And I didn't have to die to figure it out, thankfully. So we have to remember that in the future. Like right in this area by the lake, for some reason, there are a bunch of horde elites. Just kind of wandering around. You know, we've got seven minutes to get this done and get it turned in. And I don't know if that's going to be enough time. Alright, here's our last boar, and then we'll have about five minutes to run back.
kind of wondering if we want to do a little bit of stuff in Red Ridge before we go back to Westfall to finish up the People's Militia. There are some level 15, 16, 17 quests in Red Ridge that I think wouldn't be too dangerous to do. Some of it is fighting wildlife for a cooking quest. Some of it is fighting the, uh, the gnolls. So we could do that. That would be a zone that we have not really quested in at all during Hardcore. Hello. Have a good one. Alright, so we're done with Daryl. I, I think we're going to take a little bit of a break here. It's not the best place for it, but I am going to get on later. So later I plan to do Bingle's Missing Supplies as well as the Crocolis Meat and Skin. And then we will see about, you know, either going to Red Ridge or doing some more stuff in Westfall. But all we really have in Westfall is the People's Militia, um, which is level 17. And if we take a look at Red Ridge, we could do Assessing the Threat at level 17. We could grab Hillary's Necklace out of the lake, level 15. Lost Tools is over here, level 16. Price of Shoes is a breadcrumb to Goldshire. Messenger to Stormwind is level 14. Dry Times is 15. Free Lunch is 15. We have a lot of stuff we could do here. I think we do some stuff in Red Ridge before we go back to Westfall. You know, and we can hearth back to Westfall and fly to Red Ridge. We do have both fly points. So yeah, that's what I'm thinking about. Let me know what you guys think. I would love to hear from you. And until next time, take care of yourselves out there and take care of each other. And we'll see you back here again very soon. Bye for now.